Hey, thanks for checking out Eskimo TV. My name is Jason Escamilla, and today I'm going to be going over the best films of 2018. This is going to be my personal favorite list of movies that came out this year. Grades do not matter. This is just the list of movies that when I've put this together, these are the movies that I thought were the most enjoyable, the most exciting to watch. And so I'm going to go ahead and start with number 10. And before I reveal my number one favorite movie of the year, I am going to give a couple of honorable mentions, things that I really wanted to be on this list, but they just didn't quite make it. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Number 10 is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I really enjoyed this movie and it was a big surprise because looking at the trailers, I wasn't really looking forward to this movie. I like Spider-Man, but the animation on first glance didn't really uh, catch me, uh, catch my interest. And I just thought it was gonna be a kid's cartoon, but this had a lot of stuff that I look for when I look for a just really enjoyable movie. It had characters, it had emotion, it had good action sequences, it was thrilling. I really enjoyed Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's not my favorite Spider-Man movie. I definitely think Spider-Man 2 is my favorite, but it might be my second or third favorite Spider-Man movie. <laughs> Number nine is Game Night. I love this movie. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I probably love this movie more than most people. Uh, but to me, this was just a very hilarious experience. Best comedy of the year. I really enjoyed how each character in this movie had a very distinct characteristic. And this is a very over the top movie, which lately I haven't really been a big fan of those types of movies. Like last year we had Pitch Perfect 3, earlier this year we had Blockers, we also had Happy Time Murders. All those were kind of in the same over-the-topness, but for whatever reason, Game Night stood out and was very different in the sense that I just think that the writing was a lot smarter. I think that the specific jokes that were said were just done very creatively and and they didn't rely on vulgarity and violence for the laughs. I felt like the laughs, the dialogue, the screenplay was just so good that I couldn't help but laugh through this movie. And so to me, this is the funniest movie of the year. And if you want a good laugh, this is the number one recommendation that I would give. <laughs> Number eight is Eighth Grade. I thought that this movie was a real representation of what not just eighth graders, but kids in schools go through. You have just a bunch of kids on their phones. It's really hard to make friends more so than you would think with just different cliques and things that are around, especially if you're someone like Kayla in this movie, who's just a very quiet and really socially awkward individual, but you still like her despite the fact that she's a big jerk to her dad because you understand why she is the way that she is. I enjoyed this movie. I felt like it had a lot of good emotional moments. I thought that it was funny at, at certain points. And so uh, I really enjoyed eighth grade and it is my number eight spot for the year. <laughs> number seven is searching. Holy cow, this was such a heartbeat, emotional experience, and I think it is one of the best thrillers this year. First computer phone perspective movie that I've seen that really, really worked as well as it did. I felt like John Cho did just such a good job in this movie at playing a caring father, and I also thought that it was... It was done creatively. Number six is Love, Simon. I really loved Love, Simon. It is kind of a generic high school drama, but it's the first one released by a major studio that has a homosexual character. And because it was done so well, despite it being like a lot of other high school dramas, I felt like it did a lot of what 
these types of movies need to do to be good. It had a good story. I felt like it was unique and I felt like, I mean, they had a lot of great source material to work with. Uh, I've read the book that this movie is based off of Simon versus the Homo Sapien Agenda. And I think that the plot itself was captivating. It's a very weird situation. What do you do if you are blackmailed into doing something you don't want to do? And I think that the way the story was told, the different characters in the movie, I really enjoyed this. And I've, I've seen this a couple times. I've showed friends. And this is a movie that's really easy to love and so I I my number six for the years love Simon <laughs> number five is the wife Glenn Close just does a phenomenal job in this movie she's definitely gonna be nominated for best actress come Oscar season and she I would not be upset if she wins I actually am rooting for her she is such a powerhouse in this movie, and the story itself, which I get, a lot of people say this felt like a small play, but for me, if you can get me invested into some characters, especially two I was invested into, uh, the husband and wife in this movie, you got me, and I love the relationship between the two of them. It's so imperfect, but I still love them because I understand them. I love the flashbacks that are used in this movie to get us to connect more with these characters. I felt like they were very well done. I felt like the, the, the story moves along at a fairly decent pace. Sometimes it may be like a little slow, but to me, Glenn Close's performance is what... Uh, just makes this movie as great as it was. And so The Wife did not get a super wide release. I know that it didn't play everywhere. So if you did not get a chance to see this movie, I would seek it out if you can find it. It is just a very good experience. And if you like drama and you like some solid characters that are very well developed and, and you you like to see flashbacks of the characters that we're watching to understand how they why they are the way that they are, I think you'll really enjoy the wife. Number four is Ben is back. I haven't seen a lot of marketing for this movie like I would like to. Uh, I've, I mean, I've seen commercials, but I really haven't heard anyone talking about this movie. And it's not bad. It's doing. It's fresh on Rotten Tomatoes as of this moment that I'm filming this. It has great performances by Julia Roberts, Lucas Hedges. It's not playing at every single theater, so if you can find Ben is Back, it's playing, it came out this December uh, 2018. If you can find Ben is Back, I would go watch it. Once again, for the performances, they're really good. Lucas Hedges, Julia Roberts just bring their best in this. And not to mention, Lucas Hedges is on fire. He's uh, been in mid-90s, boy erased, this, and he just does a really good job, and so, uh, him and Julia, they they rock this movie. They they capture your attention from the very beginning. You're following the story of this drug addict and and you know his trying to recover. And it's it takes place in 24 hours. A lot of people compare this to Beautiful Boy, but I think they're very different. Beautiful Boy is more of a drama, and this is. Kind of more the genre I really enjoy, which is the thriller. I was mesmerized from beginning to end. I was wondering what is going to happen, where are these characters going to end up, how are they going to conclude, and I think that this movie just did a really good job at, at keeping my attention from the beginning to the end. <laughs> Number three is a foreign film that was released in Sweden, and this movie is the craziest, weirdest, just most different film of the entire year. You cannot watch this movie and tell me you've seen something weirder. And if you have, please let me know because this is definitely the most weird film I've ever seen. And that movie is Border. This movie was really good, and it might be hard for some people to stomach, or some people might think that it's just a little bit too much, but 
I thought everything was great about this movie. The story was just creatively told well. I thought the actors did just a great job in this movie. And I don't want to even mention the plot here. This is just one of the most fascinating films I've seen. I I was at the edge of my seat and was surprised and shocked about what I was seeing. I couldn't believe that they were doing some of the things that they decided to do in this movie. And so if you want something to make your jaw drop and to make you, in my opinion, become really engaged in this story, you should go seek this movie out. Once again, this is not a movie that uh, got a big wide release. I hope that uh, come Oscar season, that I hope this movie gets some more attention and hopefully will be accessible in more theaters. <laughs> My number two favorite movie of the year is Hereditary. I saw this all the way back in May, and I thought this was gonna be my favorite film of the year up until the very end. Uh, Hereditary was number one on my list, and to me, this is maybe my favorite horror film ever. Toni Collette's performance is just so gosh dang good. To me, if she beats Glenn Close, you know, if she even gets nominated for Oscars, that's embarrassing to say that that might not even happen because this is a movie that I don't know how you just can watch it and not feel like she deserves an award for best actress. She's just so good. Melissa McCarthy, Lady Gaga, they're good and they should get nominated too, but I don't know how you can nominate actresses like them and not nominate Toni Collette because she had my attention throughout this film and during the scene, you know the scene I'm talking about, the the scene at the dinner table, I was shook. And so I think that she needs some recognition uh, once the nominations for Oscars get announced. I, re I mean, if she does not win, I will be extremely bothered and will campaign. I won't really do that, but I... I think that her performance is the best of the year. I think Glenn Close is arguably right next to her, but she is my favorite performance. And the movie's just really good. I think that this movie has a very realistic plot. This movie doesn't use jump scares, which is something that I really enjoyed. And it has in-depth characters, very fleshed out, very real and to me, that is what made this movie a very scary, creepy experience. There's not very many films that scare me. And this didn't make me shiver in my bed, but I went home feeling a bit antsy. And so number two is Hereditary. If you haven't checked it out, uh, I definitely would recommend it. <laughs> All right, before I reveal my number one favorite movie of the year, I have a lot of honorable mentions. I was almost thinking about doing a top 20. A lot of these movies are in my spots 11 through 20. I wanted to keep it to 10, but I will quickly, without explanation, just mention all of them real briefly. And these movies are A Quiet Place, Mid-90s, Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, Beautiful Boy, Green Book, won't You Be My Neighbor, and The Hate You Give. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my favorite movie of the year, and I really had to teeter-totter with this one in Hereditary because I really love them both, but after re-watching this, I have to say that my favorite movie of 2018 is Boy Erased because, man, this movie was just so emotional. This movie was really emotional. I've just known a lot of people in a situation where they feel like their religion or their parents or people around them has to affect who they are and what they try to do and become. And Boy Race is just such an emotional and sad experience to watch. And the, the saddest part is, it's realistic. This, these, th this movie depicts real things that are going on in the world. And so I think with that, the reason why this movie ups hereditary, this movie is impactful. I think that that you know there there can be groups of people that watch this and it can open up a very 
real conversation that needs to be had. It can help people and help people grow and realize that you don't have to make people change based on something either you believe or if you know you have a set of beliefs, don't let that uh, change who you are and try to make you be somebody you're not. And so I really enjoyed this movie. Lucas Hedges, him, he's, he's like a, a freak. He's in He's amazing in Ben is Back. He was amazing in Boy Raced. And so definitely hope that guy uh, wins something come Oscar season. But Boy Raced is just a really good emotional ride that is accompanied by some good good actors, Russell Crowe, uh, Nicole Kidman, uh, uh, Lucas Hedges, they all just do such a good job. Troy Sivan has a really good song in this too. And so uh, that is my top 10 best films of the year. These are the movies that I really enjoyed the most. Comment below and let me know what are your top 10 or 5 favorite films of the year. If you had any films on your list that coincide with mine i would definitely love to know that if there's a movie you think i left out you can comment below let me know there may have been an honorable mention that i let slip through and so i'd love to have a good conversation about all the great and fantastic movies that came out this year there was a lot of good stuff and so let me know your thoughts below. If you'd like to follow me on social media, I have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can follow me at Eskimo TV. And as always, if you enjoyed this review, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more icy and chili Eskimo TV reviews.